Our starter base design is now complete. But will we be able to build and defend it while being under massive pressure from these giant biter nests on the brutal dead world settings? Not only do we need to hold the fortress, but somehow we have to simultaneously start doing science towards some far far away useful technologies. Who knows? Well, here goes nothing. I wonder how long it will be until we find the first design flaw in this base. Anyway, we just set up the few miners that we have and then we find out we are too poor to afford the pipes needed to bring water to the power plant. But you know what they say, if you can bring water to your power plant, why not bring the power plant to the water instead? The depressing side effect is though that it will stay here completely undefended while we are busy at the iron patch. And because the biter nests are literally right next to my base, they start to form attack groups again immediately. So we set up a radar so that we can see biters approaching from slightly further away. The miners produce faster than stone furnaces can keep up with, so we can take and smell the extra ore elsewhere. Nevertheless, instead of spending that iron on miners, turrets or general progress, we are forced to spend our iron to make a pipe wall to protect the lil that we have because of the biter attack threat. Luckily the first attack happens just as we are there, so we can intercept it with a juicy grenade. Biters are trickling in from the north too now, so let's close off this side. <laughs> no entry for you my friend. Our main military strategy is that instead of waiting for the attacks to come to us, we shall preemptively strike whenever we can. You see, a biter attack group keeps building up until a randomly set timer reaches zero and the timer is not affected by the biter group interacting with the player. So taking out a large blob of biters with a preemptive strike means that the attack group will be much smaller once the timer reaches zero, making it more likely that our turrets can take them out before they do major damage. It is also way cheaper to insta kill a biter group with a grenade compared to producing ammo for the turrets. Power runs out already. I wasn't planning on refilling those boilers, but we still don't have underground pipes. Anyway, we have spent almost all of the copper that we still had from the burner phase, so it's time to start up the copper outpost. If you are wondering, the small holes in the pipe will function to hopefully seduce a portion of the biters to part towards the turrets directly, instead of chewing on the first thing in sight. We try, but we are just too late to intercept the next attack group. But hey, it's nothing you can't remedy by throwing a few grenades on your own base. And now we're almost dead again, but fortunately we can do repairs on the shadow of our turrets. Yeah, anyway it's time to start up the left side of the iron base. Hey Biter, how about a nice pipe wall in your face? Anyway, it's not really going according to plan. It looks like the Biter attack group gather point is too close to the turret, so instead of growing the group and killing them efficiently with a single grenade, they keep getting drawn to the turret in a never ending stream of biters, draining their ammo and putting a heavy burden on my iron production to keep the turrets fed. I try a small tactic to lure them away from their gather point, but it doesn't really seem to have any effect.
power runs out again and we still don't have underground pipes. Well, another manual refill it is. I'm trying to set up something productive amidst this biter chaos hell, but the turrets keep getting fully drained and I can't even hear myself think due to the biters chewing on my base everywhere. But then suddenly the biters just don't care anymore. They just stand there, right at the edge of the terrace range, getting picked off one by one. Anyway, I still don't trust them. I think as soon as I'll turn my back, they're up to no good. Slowly we're getting a few more turrets up, but we'll have to chip in manually to keep them fed with ammo. The map shows a giant attack group forming northeast behind the nest. I want to go and take them out, but there's no way to reach them, so let's reinforce this pipe wall instead. The steady stream of turret draining biters still continues, night and day. Just as we plan to make more pipes to finally bring the power plant inside the base, power runs out a third time. Miraculously though, so far the biters have left the undefended power plant alone. But this had better be the last manual refill. So we start to work on that immediately. And suddenly, it is all quiet. The biters no longer trickle into our base. It seems like they finally decided to gather somewhere further away from the base. Like right here next to the stone patch. Anyway, we are not pushing our luck any further and we finally integrate the power plant into our base. And we finally complete the two turret clusters on the iron coal patch. We take a quick stroll outside of the base to take care of the two attack groups building up. And then even manage to craft some laps. It almost feels like we're getting somewhere. But we quickly get a reminder of that it can all end in one moment of inattentiveness. The gaps in the pipe wall are working as intended though. Fortunately this was a smaller group from further away and we managed to grenade them at the last moment. But if we fail to intercept just one big attack it can all be over instantly. Science can wait, we need more ammo. A lot more ammo. And here comes the attack group we just grenaded a minute or two ago. Look at how many biters there are again. Without our grenade interception that group would be at least twice its size. Still, without our personal assistance it really takes the turrets a long time to take out all those biters. And all the while they could be destroying precious infrastructure. So it is critically important that, until we have completed our goals for this base, we either weaken attack groups before they strike, or intercept them personally before they reach the base. We finally managed to place the labs and some red science assemblers, but before we have a chance to switch them on we are distracted again by, you guessed it, the biters.
Now at some point I imagine also having green signs running, hopefully. So we prepare lots of copper wire to reduce handcrafting time for inserters. But for now we can research the red tags. Most notably I'd like to upgrade to the heavy armor before the biters, or my own grenades, overwhelm me. As you can see by my remaining health, with just light armor it will soon be impossible to deal with two biter groups in quick succession. We turn the copper wire into green circuits for the inserters. I don't mind handcrafting and I do it a lot, but I like the crafting queue to be tidy so it's easy to make quick changes. Handcrafting stuff without having intermediates on you severely clutters that up. There are three big attack groups visible on the map. The problem with that is, once we walk away to take out one group, one of the other groups may decide to attack. We need to keep a good eye on the minimap and abort the interception if we spot enemy movement towards the base. Yeah, we really need that heavy armor, but we still didn't manage to find the time to start up signs. All that's needed to start them off is insert a few copper plates, but there's just so much important stuff to do, like service these SM. Okay, I just forgot about it, okay? This playthrough is just a little bit, let's call it unorganized. The last of those three attack groups finally decides to show up. I want to save as many trees as possible. They can however survive one grenade shot, and they'll slowly grow back to full health over time. If we get so far, the trees will play an important role later, during the planned World Peace stage. They'll help to keep control over the quantum state of the biters, as they will be both there and not there at the same time. Anyway, saving those trees would go a lot smoother without being in constant danger of dying. We need that heavy armor. Thank you. Another attack threatens the copper mine. It is small though, and before we arrive, the turrets have already dealt with it. So grenades are not necessary. <sighs> oh right, goals! Somebody mentioned something about goals. We actually have some! You see, this base design just ain't gonna cut it in the long run. We're two hours in, and we are rapidly approaching the medium biter era at 20% devolution, and those guys will rip this thing apart no problem. There will be no recovering from that. So the purpose of this base is to gather the right materials to build a better base. Anyway, more on that later. Now let's test out this heavy armor thing. Ah, juicy, that feels good. 100 biters down with a single grenade shot, and we have barely a scratch on our armor. We start preparing the ingredients for green signs, belts and inserters. Because we made the green circuits already, the crafting queue stays small and organized, so should the need arise to quickly craft something, we can easily cancel and restart the queue to get it. Another attack approaches through the forests, but now we're rocking our heavy armor, it's much easier to avoid blowing up trees and not dying at the same time. We are now immune to small biters and much the same way that medium biters will be immune to our yellow ammo, each dealing the minimum of 1 damage per hit. That's also the reason we need to complete our 4 goals before we hit medium biters at 20% devolution. But we've just created a handful of steel and we haven't even started yet on the last 3 goals. And while we are immune to small biters now, the base absolutely is not as you may be able to hear in the background. Well, I guess thank you for illustrating my point. Something tells me it's going to get much harder still, and all these repairs take a long time to do, diverging our attention from possible attacks elsewhere in the base. Anyway, we are finally able to start producing the first green science packs. Hooray! The plan was to do this much earlier, but hey, we are finally building the stone mine. And won't you know, there's another one of those goals. Ideally, we would like to produce 1000 stone walls, but that requires a whopping 10,000 stone. By the way, did you ever paint yourself into a corner? This feels kinda like that. Now 
We are distributing the first green signs to our labs, but the Buiters have researched green signs too. Not only do they target the vital water supply, they have also learned that split hotkey from RTS games like Age of Empires 2. Now that may be the most dangerous kind of evolution. Intelligent biters. We're going to drop by here every once in a while to pick up all the stone bricks and... Wait, we interrupt this program for one of the most satisfying moments in Factorio. A giant grenade to the face killing hundreds of biters instantly. Ah, nice. Anyway, we'll turn those stone bricks into walls. All of them, every time. Walls, walls, walls. Walls, walls, no balls. Anyway, by this point in time, biters are literally everywhere, running from left to right, north to south, south to north, crisscross. <laughs> it's just crazy. We don't have space to automate science distribution, but fortunately it's not too hard to do manually when your lab count is 2 to the power of x. And by this point in time we no longer repair individual parts, we just wave the magic repair wand up and down over all damaged sections. Will we be able to hold on until we've reached all four of our goals? We haven't even had the time yet to talk about the last two goals in this absolute mayhem. Anyway, goal 3 is researching the flamethrower attack, which still feels miles away in technology. The biters running around everywhere is again putting a severe strain on my ammo usage. The turrets are our last line of defense and slowly but surely more and more of them are left empty. Why did I start this playthrough? Perhaps, Michael son. The ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son. The ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son. The ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son. The ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son. The ultimate challenge is the one you cannot defeat. Perhaps, Michael son, 